While drought and overcrowding have been blamed for the death of elephants in Zimbabwe's biggest national park, 55 elephants died in the past two months alone in the country's Hwange National Park. Authorities say lack of food and water have resulted in the animals straying into nearby communities. But for more on this, I'm joined uh, via Skype by Audrey Delsink from Humane Society International Africa. Audrey, thank you so much for your time in joining us. I mean, 55 elephants dying under the watch of Hwange National Park how did the National Park allow this to happen? Well, I think we need to take this into context. Um, you know, we, we need to understand that ecosystems work in a system of flux. And, um, you know, drought is a natural process of that, uh, of that system. So we do have opportunities where we do have deaths that result as a result of drought. Um, and yes, climate change is absolutely a factor that plays into, into this account. But I think, you know, one of the things that's being left out here is that there's an increasing amount of mining activity within national parks, including Wangi, um, such as coal mining, which does have a significant impact on draining of the water resources. And this also constitutes a problem, competes with animals for the space for the resources, for water, for the habitat, and um, is also instrumental in pushing the animals out. Yeah. And let's also talk about you know, the lack of funding, which I understand the National Park didn't receive any funding, at least from government. When national parks are in a situation where they are self-funded, what challenges do they come across? Well, I mean, it must be said, you know, national parks are certainly under the hammer and um, they do need to explore all sorts of uh, funding um, activities. But a number of NGOs have um, reached out to assist with these issues. And um, I think, you know, in my mind, I think that we need to be very careful that, that this is not being used as a convenient excuse um, to motivate activities such as the exports of um, wild-caught elephants to foreign zoos to fund, um, you know, the necessary park activities because um, those funds should be used for conservation. Um, and it, we just need to be very careful about the messages that are coming out here. Yeah. And also understand that the park on its own could only have handle 15,000 elephants and in this instance there were you know approximately 50,000 so clearly there was an issue of overcapacity or at least overcrowding here well, once again, you know, carrying capacity is a very subjective um, terminology. It's bandied about, and you know, we need to understand who's deriving these figures and 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 where were these figures actually obtained. Um, carrying capacity is very, very convenient excuse. It is a very complex phenomenon, and in fact, many scientists are not in agreement as to what the ideal carrying capacity or benchmark figure is. So I think, once again, it's convenient to say that it's over the carrying capacity, but there's a whole range of factors and suites of um, exacerbate this problem. And just lastly, before I let you go, uh, Audrey, let's talk about prevention. I mean, 55 elephants dying of starvation. Yes, you did mention, you know, issues of climate change, issues of drought, which are, of course, natural causes. But uh, how do you think conservationists, so at least uh, national parks, can prevent uh, such, uh, you know, incidences from occurring? Well, I think there needs to be a clear understanding of whose responsibility it is to, to manage and to maintain, you know, the facilities that pump water, for example, um, and how those are maintained. You know, it's our understanding that there's been a long-standing um, degradation of those facilities, which has also culminated in the problem. So, um, absolutely, you know, partners need to work hand in hand um, to ensure that, you know, those sources that do feed these artificial water um, supply points are are maintained um, as as a means to an end. But I think it is critical. You know, there's, there seems to be a very confused message here. On the one hand, the park is saying that there's way too many elephants crying about an overpopulation. On the other, you know, we death is a, is a part of the cycle and we are seeing deaths as a result of the drought. That is also a concern. But again, to me, it, it feels as if it's, it's part of an excuse to, to try and capitalize and exploit possibly on the export of elephants for foreign facilities. Well, Audrey, thank you so much uh, for joining us right here on the upfront. That's Audrey joining us talking about the Huangi National Park. Of course, uh, they have just uh, lost 55 elephants to death.